Hello everybody, uh, I'm Ian Abernethy uh, and in this video I want to show some basic drills for uh, an elbowing and knee combination. Uh, we find elbows and knees throughout the traditional uh, karate forms, we should take them out of the forms and practice them in other ways, okay? Uh, the katas provide the syllabus of the art, or, but we need to take them out of there to drill them in, in, in other ways too, obviously. So uh, what I want to show you here is a variety of drills and the way in which they all interact and the strengths of one drill can't wrap the weaknesses of another drill. So essentially we've got three Three drills in this video okay the, the, the first one we've got is we uh, work with our partner and we do the actual techniques uh, against your partner's body now when I'm, I'm practicing hitting him with elbows and dropping a knee into his groin I obviously can't do that full speed and power all right I, I would hurt people so what we do is we introduce uh, flaws into training to ensure safety Training can be realistic, but it's never real. If it's real, we're legitimately hurting people and we'll be sending people to the, the, uh, the hospital every training session. So every martial art does this, all right? Or we introduce flaws to make sure that the person doesn't get hurt. And we need to be mindful of what those flaws are so we can counteract those flaws with other drills. So therefore we can still train in a way that's realistic, but nobody gets hurt in the process. So the first drill we do, we're actually touching the elbows and knees against the partner. And that's great because it gives us a, a, an actual sense of what we're hitting, an actual sense of what we're doing. Um, we, we've got the, the, the placement of the techniques on a real human body. What I can't do is do it full speed and power, because if I did, I'd be legitimately injuring my partner. So the flow is okay, the positioning is good, but I have to take the speed and the power out for safety. So because the speed and power are lacking, I need to correct them somewhere else. Right? So one of the drills we do is we take the same elbow and knee combination onto the pads, where my partner puts the pads in the place where the elbows and knees would be. Now, because of the, the rapid nature of the combination, it's impossible to move the pads around fast enough. So now I've got the advantage of I have the impact, which I didn't have on the previous drill, but I've now not got the same flow because I have to wait for my partner to get the, uh, the pads in position. Um, it doesn't matter how quick a pad holder I can't be done at the speed that, that, that you can hit. So again, this drill has the strength of we have actual impact, it has the disadvantage of the uh, flow is starting to get lost, okay, and the speed is starting to get lost. So finally what we do is we do it in the lines, we do it as key on, so we line everybody up and we go through the basic motion against the air. Now that's an often criticised form of practice, but what that form of practice enables me to do is it enables me to do it full speed uh, and with power. There's nothing for me to hit, so I'm not really getting impact, although the motion, uh, the motion that I've got would develop the impact. It's simply that there's no target for it to hit. Uh, and I'm not hurting anybody because no one's there to be hurt. So we've got three drills. Uh, we do it with a partner, so we get the positioning, but we don't get the impact and the speed. We do it on the pads where we get the impact, but we don't get the kind of the right flow. And, and the speed gets interrupted um, because or the speed between the techniques gets interrupted because the partner has to move the pads. Finally, we do it in the lines. That has the disadvantage of there's no body there. Um, so in that sense, it's unrealistic. There's no impact there. So in that sense, it's unrealistic. But it's realistic because it allows me to actually do the technique with the that the speed and the flow and the body mechanics that I would use. So every time we do this, we have a, a fault within any given drill has a fault because we want to ensure safety. We spend, we go to the dojo, uh, we, we train, we practice uh, techniques that will hurt other human beings and no one gets hurt. So by definition, we did everything wrong. You know, morally right, but technically wrong. And we need to be mindful of what those wrong things are and make sure we've got other drills that correct that later on. So therefore, everything that we need to do gets practiced. All the con constituent parts are, are practiced and drilled, but we use separate drills to, to get that. Any drill on its own is incomplete. All of the drills together give us what we need. Now, obviously, these are just uh, technical drills. The next thing we need to do is take it into sparring. Uh, those of you who've got my app uh, will have seen some of that done where we do the live kind of close range sparring using elbows and knees. Uh, again, we tend to use a little bit of control and padding and placement so again no one gets hurt and that's obviously the next step up. In this one, we're just simply looking at the development of the technique of this combination. So I hope you find it interesting and I hope you see how all three techniques uh, or ways of training uh, integrate. Um, I hope you find it interesting. Okay, I'll be back with more soon. All right, take care. Bye-bye. So just obviously now be careful in control. I just want to get the arms up. So the idea is you've got these arms really tight and close up, right? So the first thing I'm going to do is hook them. When you hook, make sure you're not putting your thumbs underneath. So not that, because if Tim throws his arms downwards from there very quickly, my hands will end up in the middle here, he's going to get the shock in, right? So you want this kind of hook here, like this kind of uh, monkey grip thing, right? Once you've got that from there, very slowly practice it. So the first one, see how you his head this way. So the second one will come in as a straight spike, ground and coming in towards the groin. So it's very slow, do that bit quick, right? but then slowly down. One, 
two, three. Okay, before you uh, escape back out. Is that okay? Just because I'm just getting a feel for what we're actually aiming to do with these strikes. So the first one is striking that direction, the second one is going that direction. Right? So I'm not going to put one side of it, so it's there, cross, that takes his head into position, so the second one hits from there, and that will naturally roll around the back of his neck for the knee. Is that okay? Just do that with the pattern just to get the feel, the shape of it, and then we'll take it off the pads again. Is that alright? Okay. So we're very close, and the enemy's arms are in the way, right? When you're stripping them, as I just mentioned, thumbs don't go under. Because if you take a thumb as under, it pulls his arm down from there, your hand's lying below. His is going to be with his shots, right? But if you do this, both our arms are down, so I've gained no advantage. But I have a slight advantage because my hands are on top, but it's still going to be a race to the head, right? So try and get that sharp, explosive shock on it, but your hands are still up. Is that okay? So you're kind of flicking them out of the way. Then when you've got that from there, my hand can come in with that first elbow as we talked about, which knocks his head across. We're coming with the second elbow, which caps him there, grab him straight at the knee strike. So be slow on the strikes for the safety of it, but get that initial bounce on there. Boom! There, one. Right? So nice and close. I can't get in at the moment, the arms are right? And then from there, I'm in with the next three shots. Is that okay? So drop, drop your arms down, swing them straight back up. Boom. Boom. It's ready for those next three shots after that. Is that okay? So it's saying the partner's going to hold the pad, so the team's got the mystery on, so this one is vertical, I want to move back to right? So partner's head's here, we've got no arms to hook anymore, but still the same idea. Make sure you get the, the, the width from the hip, come down here, give your partner time to move it round, you can't do it as fast as you would do in the air, right? If the partner then moves this pad across like the head had done, strike it here, put your arm behind from there, and you strike it. You have to take a bit of power out on the knees with that, as I mentioned, because it just goes straight through these points. Right, we're going in from there, they're nice and close. Again. One more. One more. Okay, we're just backing away at the end as well, just completely good. So, alright, one last quick call back, please, eh? So, you, you can do it, um, <coughs> power on the pads, but you can't get the, the actual flow of it. You can do it with flow on a partner, but you can't put the speed in, right? Or, or the impact, because you're going to have problems. So we need the key on, we need to do it in the lines so we can get the, the, the speed and the actual movement. So all three drills give you something. You know, you do it with a partner, you get the realism of where the body is, you get the flow of it. You do it on the pads, you get the impact of it. The only way you can kind of uh, do it with a bit of venom, if you like, you know, at the correct pace is when there's nobody there. Partner can't possibly move the pads quick enough. Right? And, and if you do it on a partner, it's just an accident waiting to happen, right? Because elbows are difficult to control. So the second we'll do it in the lines, again, try to use this, this kick from the hip again here. So the hip starts everything off, it's just the first whip. Our hips are now primed just to drop back this way. The second whip, arms are going behind and the head, the hips already lagging there as we use that for the final one. So then, here, here, one, two, three. All is one bit of flat. Is that okay? So the line up will be the quick go on both sides.